Well, since we've been shooting a 40 caliber, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to celebrate reaching 400,000 subscribers. We always shoot our trophy plaque from YouTube with a caliber matching the first two numbers of our new subscribers. So here is to all of you who have joined us on YouTube, who have been with us for the whole ride. We are gonna put a 40 caliber hole to celebrate our 400,000th subscriber. <laughs> nice little collection. Thanks, everybody. If the 45 ACP is too big and the 9mm Luger is too small, where do we strike a happy balance? Well, I think shooting instructor and Marine Jeff Cooper asked that back in the late 1970s. And the answer was already in existence, the 357 Magnum. But the 357 Magnum is a rimmed cartridge suitable for revolvers. The 45 and the 9mm are rimless and they're set up for auto loading handguns. And auto loading handguns were sort of becoming the standard for police departments as well as the military. Of course, the military had been using the 45 ACP and the 1911 Colt handgun since 1911. <laughs> so, what Colonel Cooper wanted to do was find a cartridge that would perform like the 357 Magnum in the format to better fit the auto loaders. And he came up with the 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter is not all that well known, not all that popular, but it really fits the bill. 10 millimeters is the same as 40 caliber. This is a 40 caliber bullet. And it goes faster than the 45 ACP and hits a lot harder than the 9mm, so there's your happy balance. So we can slide these two off the table and concentrate on the 10mm, comparing it to the revolver cartridge 357 Magnum, and demonstrate this version of a 1911 chambered for the 10mm. Now, historically, the 10mm came about in 1983. Norma developed the cartridge itself, I guess from scratch, was no parent cartridge. And the uh, Bren, B-R-E-N, hand, auto-loading handgun was chambered for it, and that got things rolling. Didn't last long. I think that Bren, or the company that made it, lasted about three years. And then it kind of faded away. The FBI thought it would be a great option because it was splitting that difference between the 45 and the 9 millimeter. But it turned out a lot of the agents really couldn't shoot it all that well. A little bit too much recoil for them. Uh, probably because the first bullet that they used in that round was the 200 grain. And it's quite a bit of recoil with that. They backed off to 180 grain. 10 millimeter sort of fell into the background for a while. But in recent years, probably the last two, 15 at least, maybe 20, it's come back quite, quite nicely because people are realizing you can have the convenience of a 1911 style auto-loading handgun in 10 millimeter and get the same ballistic performance you would get from the 357 Magnum in a revolver. And that inspired Kimber to produce this beautiful little piece, a six inch barreled, and uh, nine, obvious 1911 style auto loading handgun for hunting. They call it the Super Jaeger. This was, oh, I've, I've had this thing since probably 2017 or so. And it's a custom shop offering. Pretty expensive piece. Can't argue that. But it really does demonstrate the potential of the 10 millimeter. We're going to go out and shoot this and just see how well it does. But before we do that, I thought we would look at some ballistics and see if it's true that the 10 millimeter can stand with the 357 or maybe even shoot a little bit better. So what I did as usual is I went through the hand loading manuals and I considered some of the better bullets for these and the velocities and balanced things out. Now, of course, the challenge with hand loading manuals is always matching things up. Some will give you numbers worked up for a five inch barrel, some a six, some even an eight. So I had to do a little bit of extrapolating for these, but I found 180 grain bullets for both. And I worked up these numbers because I figure 180 grain bullet is probably what you want for a good hunting bullet. Uh, we will discuss a 158 too, but I think 
the preference might be for more mass in a bullet out of a something that's going as slowly as these do. So here's what I came up with. The 10 millimeter is going to have a 180 grain bullet that has a ballistics coefficient of 164, 0.164, and we're going to drive it 1,250 feet per second. That might be a little bit fast for the shorter barrels, a little bit slow for the longer barrels, but pretty close. We're going to zero that thing at 25 yards, and then we're going to compare it against the 357 uh, Magnum with a 180 grain bullet at 1,150 feet per second. Zero that one at 25 yards as well. And what we find in our little ballistic chart here, if you look down the range column, you'll see that everything's done up in 10 yard increments. So we're not really seeing the 25 yard, we got the 20 and then the 30, but you can tell by looking between the lines there that it's probably dead on at around 25 and it is. Of course, 50 yards is a pretty good distance for, for deer hunting with a handgun. And you're dropping just a little more than a half inch with the 10 millimeter and uh, Gosh, almost exactly the same, 0.77 inches of drop out of the uh, 357. Now, the energies, you're starting off with more energy in the 10 millimeter auto. Look at the energy column over there on the right. 625 foot pounds out of the 10 millimeter auto, 529 out of the 357 Magnum. So you've got an advantage right away. But you've got a higher BC in that 35 caliber bullet. So remember, that is going to give it a downrange advantage because it doesn't lose as much energy pushing air out of the way. So then at 50 yards, you're hanging on to 508 foot-pounds of energy out of the 10 millimeter and 466 out of the uh, 357. I really don't notice that a deer is going to notice a difference on those, but I haven't shot deer with really either one of them, so I really can't answer that. But a lot of guys have used both, and they think they're darn effective, at least up to 50 yards. And I've heard a lot of guys will go to 100. So let's jump out to 100 and see what we get. 432 foot-pounds of energy remaining in the 10 millimeter, 419 in the 357. So pretty close. What about the drops? Elevation column there on the left. Go to the bottom in 100 yards and you see it's 6.97. So essentially a 7 inches of drop out of the 10 millimeter and 8 inches out of the 357. As I said, these things are really quite ballistically similar. Uh, wind deflection, you've got a little bit of an advantage to the 357 because of that higher BC bullet. Three inches versus four and a half inches for the 10 auto. Neither one of those is going to cost you a deer at 100 yards in a 10 mile an hour right angle wind. So I think pretty viable option for both of those. Now, some folks will say, well, wait a minute. I generally shoot my deer in my 357 Magnum with a 158 grain bullet. I couldn't find a 158 for the 10, but I did find a 155 grain bullet close enough. I was able to uh, drive that one and what? 1,500 feet per second. That might be a little bit high, but it's pretty close to what they were, were running at. I had to extrapolate from a, uh, I think it was a six inch barrel data that I found. 357 Magnum, I think that was out of a six inch barrel, 1,500 feet per second. So we're about the same there. What are our differences? Not a heck of a lot. You go all the way out to 400 yards on your elevation column. Your drop is 4.48 or four and a half inches out of the 10 millimeter, and it's four inches out of the 357. Energies start off with a little bit more in the 357 Magnum, believe it or not. Um, and it, well, it keeps that advantage at 100 yards. 514 foot pounds of energy compared to 447. So if you go to the lighter bullet, I think you're going to have an advantage in your 357. But if you would rather shoot an auto-loading handgun, I think you're going to do just fine with your 10 millimeter auto. So those are kind of the basics on the ballistics. Now I think what we need to do is go outdoors to the range and uh, shoot this handgun, see how well it does, and then talk about the practicality of hunting with it. Uh, as you'll notice, we don't have open sights on this. We've got a red dot here from Leupold. We want to see how effective that is and whether it's something you might want to consider for your style of handgun hunting, or if you're like me and really haven't done too much handgun hunting, what you might want to pick up for that. So let's go on out to the range and learn more about the performance of the 10 millimeter. Hi folks. Hey, some exciting news. My book on the seven millimeter cartridges is about to hit the streets, and I think we can get them to you before Christmas. Now, here's a special deal we're going to offer. Go to ronspomeroutdoors.com, my website, and you can order a personalized signed 
volume. We're normally going to do those for $50, but we're going to do it $40 if you get that order in on Black Friday before the end of the day. And normally, if you want to save some money, you can pick this up for $30. That's going to be the normal price. But uh, the special signed editions and personalized ones like my best 7 millimeter shooter husband, <laughs> something like that, we're happy to do that for you. So go to ronspomeroutdoors.com and be ready for the 7 millimeter cartridge book we cover every seven millimeter cartridge in the world that I could dig up, including not only the ones that are currently being made and sold as factory ammunition, but Wildcats, obsolete cartridges, proprietary cartridges, pretty much everything and anything out there. So we'd love to have your business. I hope you enjoy the book, Seven Millimeters by Ron Spomer. Oh, and Merry Christmas. All right, guys, this is a close-up of the Super Jaeger from Kimber. And as you can see, it's a custom shop offer. At least it was when I picked it up back in 2017. I don't know if they still make it or not, if it's in the line. Haven't looked. But I, I haven't used it all that much. I thought I was really going to get into handgunning, and it just didn't turn out. But I'm hoping to go pursue at least a white-tailed doe in Kansas with it this year. I've got to check the regs to make sure handgun legal, but I think it is. So I might get to try it. But this is what we're looking at. It's a 6-inch barrel. Obviously, it's an auto loader. And it is got a magazine in it that locks uh, it open after the last shot. So the bolt gets essentially caught there. So if I pop the magazine out, I can now release the slide. And we see that it is empty. I'm looking down the... Stick my finger in. We're good. All right. So we're safe. My car to handle, laminated. Really pretty nice lines on that with some checkering in the front and not the back. And what I've noticed in the past is that it's really smooth to shoot because it doesn't rip my fingers. But you've got a little bit of scalloping here on the metal at the back of the frame and in the front, kind of a shark skin pattern or scale like pattern on it. And I have just noticed that it's really comfortable to shoot. You have a similar pattern here in the side for getting your slide for, but I tend to find it right here rather than over this because of this loopholed red dot sight. This comes with it, no open sights, and it's uh, really a pretty effective, it's got a steel bar over the top to protect the glass, and I think that's a grand idea. And it's a pretty highly rated sight. Now the barrel, as I said, was six inches, but it's ported, the slide's ported, and the barrel underneath it is ported, and that is to reduce muzzle flip, whether or not it's super effective. I don't know. We're going to do a little more shooting here, and I'll pay attention to that. But as I said, the times I've shot it, I found it to be quite smooth. It has an ambidextrous safety, one on both sides here. So you can run from either side. If you're a lefty, obviously, it's got the external hammer. This is a single action, not a double action. I might pull the trigger. I cannot bring that hammer back. I have to have it cocked for my first shot, after which, of course, the slide would operate and you would have your subsequent shots. Eight round magazine, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I've already popped it out. Duh, uh. And I've got, oh, I've got a great bunch of ammunition here to test. This is some uh, federal trophy bonded jacket. It's off point. Yeah, I think these are all 180 grains. Let's just see how many we can, we can put down. Three, four, five. Let's get those in. And we'll go from there. Now, I might not have mentioned earlier that this gave rise to the 40 Smith & Wesson. When the uh, FBI and various police agencies determined this was probably a little more recoil than most of the shooters could handle effectively, they were looking for something still in 40 caliber, but a little easier on the recoil. And they came up with the 40 Smith & Wesson by shortening this case a little bit. And that seems to be easier, but I even hear complaints about the recoil on that. So, so there's your eight rounds in the magazine. I don't know, we've got all these holes in the magazine and it's hard to see the cartridges because they're not brass. <laughs> they're nickeled. It's difficult to see, but there's the last one down there. So we're about ready to shoot. And what else I can tell you on this? Oh, you know, something I might do is just check that trigger pull. I was going to do that. All right, she's empty. I know it's a smooth trigger pull. Let me hold it this way for you, and you can watch that trigger break. Really light, and it, it's nice and crisp. Doesn't seem like it has any kind of creep before it breaks. But let's just see what the 
scale registers here. The scale register, I can't do that because I don't have the safety pushed <laughs> right here at the back. You've got this beaver tail to protect you from the hammer, which is nice, but you have to squeeze that before you can get a shot off. Like it was about five and a half pounds. Boy, it sure doesn't feel like that. Try that again. That was six and a half. That surprises me. It feels lighter than that. So I'd call it a five and a half to six pound probably. Well, let's just see how effectively it shoots because that is the tail. All right, boys, let's see how this shoots. We've got the Federals, 180 grain, with that red dot in the center of the target. I don't even remember where I've ever had this thing zeroed. Looks like it's uh, about an inch to the right and an uh, inch or two low. Let's just see how well it groups. And it looks like it's about an inch and a half higher than the first shot. This is the first shot down this barrel in a few years at least. I don't see that one. We'll go check out. I think I'm going to stop at three, guys. And, and the reason being is because in a hunting gun like this, I would like to think I'm taking the right shot to start with. <laughs> and I'm not going to be spraying lead out there to bang, 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 bang. So I, I suspect I'm either make, make it on my first three shots or it's probably not going to happen. But let's just go see what kind of a group we've got. Well, I didn't see that one. I saw this one and I thought I saw my next one up here, but nice right there, a little bit low, but for the first three shots in several years out of an unfamiliar handgun, I'm not too unhappy with that, but I'm thinking I'm gonna probably bring it up probably close to two inches. I wanna zero it at 25 because I've run my ballistics and I'm good out to about 75 yards with the dead on hold, seven inches or so of drop at 100. Uh, that to me sounds like a pretty good option for deer hunting. So let's just turn that thing up and maybe bring it an inch to the left too. All right, so it's pretty simple to adjust this. Obviously turning it this way turns it right. We need to go left. It has clicks. And I don't know, I think they're half, half inch clicks at 100 yards. I'm not sure. I'd have to read up on it, but I'm gonna give it eight because I can't believe that's gonna work at 25 yards either way. So here's the vertical. We're going to go up. One, two, three, four, eight. Just see uh, how far that takes us. I'm thinking that's probably gonna need to be doubled, but I just not sure how this thing adjusts. All right, I am going to aim at the upper left diamond. Oh, looks like I'm right there, maybe a little bit left. Straight underneath, looking pretty good. Might have to come back a click. Felt like I might have pulled that one a little bit left, but once again, let's drop the magazine, clear. Lock it. And go check. Pretty smooth shooting little handgun, not a lot of muzzle climb. Oh, well, I'm looking at my chronograph right now. I'm seeing 1,336 feet per second. Got a high of 1,361 and a low of 1,326. <laughs> Look at this, guys. I think I put two holes. Two bullets in the same hole right there. It's a little bit oblong right there. And that's why I couldn't see that last shot. Wow. And that's an inch group at, at 25 yards. That'll be about two inches at 50. I think we'll stretch out there, guys. I think we're gonna go out longer now, but I'm gonna bring it back over a couple of clicks. Obviously, I went too far. Bring it back over and see what we do. Well, now that I've got it nicely zeroed for that federal ammunition, let's just try a few more brands here, see if there's any significant improvement. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that, but let's try this Creedmoor ammo. It's a 180 grain XTP. I, I'm thinking that might might be a Hornady bullet. Oh, I've got some Hornady. Yeah, here's the Hornady version. Same thing, only this is 155 grain. I do have some lighter loads, so we'll try that too. But let's just put three of them in for now and use that same target. We'll aim for the upper right. 
and see if uh, this load goes to roughly the same place. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through this chronograph. So let's see what we have here. We're gonna review this. Average of both, all those shots, uh, 1339. Stream spread is 35. SD is 12. Let's go for our high and low again. All right, here's our high, 1361. Low was 1326, so the average is 1339. So 1340, I think, is what I could use to calculate my drops and deflections and power down range and remaining energy and all the rest of it. I think I'll delete that string now and we'll try the other ammo. Upper right. It's like it's straight up, maybe a little bit to the left. I like a red dot on a handgun. I was holding a little bit to the right, it felt like on that one, but it looked like that bullet went left. Hmm. Go down there and check that one. My velocity is 1266. My high was 1266. My low was 1253. Average was 1260, quite a bit slower. Well, here was my first shot. And we opened up quite a bit, one, two, almost a three inch group there. You know, they'd be fine for a 25 yard shot and probably good out to 50, but uh, the Federal seems to group much better. I'd probably run with that. And it's also faster. So, so far that's my winner. Now we'll try this uh, Elite Performance Ammunition from SIG. 180 grain bullet, the hollow point, jacketed hollow point. 180 grain, that ought to put a hurt on a deer. I'll try three shots with that. Not sure I'm gonna try the 155s. I'm not likely to use that for hunting. Looks like it, I can't quite tell where that one went. If I don't mix it up with the others. That one felt like it was a little bit left when it broke. I don't know. It looks like I might have a pretty nice little group out there. Go check him out. Well, I think I may have screwed up on this one by pulling it, but boy, these two are suggestive of <laughs> doing pretty well, but quite a bit higher, I think. And also a little bit slower. 1266 was the average for those three. I think I'm sticking with the Federals, but I want to do quite a bit more shooting before I can really say one load is definitely more accurate than the other. I think I'm close enough though, now I'm gonna use a Federal. I'm gonna go out to 100 yards, so I think I'll have to pick up the table and move it back 25 yards so I can reach that 100 yard target out there. That'll be a bit of a challenge. All right, guys, I've got uh, three rounds of the Federal that I've decided I'm going to hunt with. We're gonna try it. I thought I was gonna to go to 100, but shoot, I better just do 50. I don't even know if I can hit a target at 50. My inexperienced handgunning skills. Of course, I'm not gonna have this bench out hunting either, but that whole target there is about the vital zone of a deer, so. I can't see that, we'll have to go look, but we'll give ourselves a group first. Felt a little right on that one, but let's just go down there and see what we've got. Oh, I'm pretty satisfied with that, guys. I mean, especially that one, aiming for the center straight up an inch. But then I've got one couple of inches higher and one couple of inches lower. But once again, you're looking at about, oh gosh, that's about a six inch group there. Vital zone of a deer. So I am confident shooting deer to 50 yards if I have a rest as solid as the one I just used. So the next thing I need to do is some practice shooting off of some rests and I'll probably use a, a sitting bipod. Seems about right for me because I'm usually out walking and not just sitting in a tree stand or something. But boy, I think that's probably essential to have a really good rest. I might try a few shots over here just for giggles without a rest. So we'll try to remember a sticker came off of this one. I put those stickers on, but one, two, three must bend my group. All right, guys, I think I'll just sit down, shoot off my knees with my back against the shooting bench here. This is uh, likely a 
potential shooting position. See how wiggly I am. Hmm. I'm quivering across <laughs> that whole target pretty well. See if I can hold tight enough to get a shot in there. <laughs> Felt pretty good. <sighs> I think I should have hit him on that one. And that one too. I think I'd have gotten my deer there, but let's go check it out, guys. I gotta say, I do like the mild recoil of this gun. It really isn't that hard. Real comfortable in the hand. Okay, now this looks encouraging, guys. I can't exactly swear to which one of these hits I made. As you can see, these stickers are coming off. I think I land close enough to them that they come off, but this might have been one of my shots. This was one, two, three three, I think, or one, two, three, were the, the last ones off the bench at 50 yards. And then I was sitting and ah, I don't see any in the white and they all felt like I was in the black. So somewhere in here, I shot those and probably one of these is it. That was from sitting over my knees. So that's pretty encouraging. I think if I practiced, I'd become a pretty fair shot with this handgun rig here. So Maybe I shouldn't have waited so long to get into handgun hunting. This is going to be kind of fun. So if you guys are, are interested at all in some handgun hunting, you might want to try something like this someday. I think the 10 millimeter can certainly do the job. And if I do this hunt, I'll certainly report back on how effectively everything worked or didn't, including me. See you next time, guys. Hunt honest and shoot straight. That means including if you're shooting a handgun.